Greetings and salutations. What a beautiful day for a ball game. Let's play two. The Millennium Falcon and the Jade Saber arrive at Dubrillion, Lando's planet, where there was more planetary traffic than the core. One member of the crew was absent, Jaina, who was flying in Luke's X-Wing. Mera purposefully gave her the wrong coordinates to see if Jaina can find her way with the Force. Sure enough, Jaina arrived momentarily and blamed R2 for being late. Looking at the streams of ships going back and forth from the asteroids, Han can only wonder how Lando was running an operation of such scale. Flying into the new, tightly clustered city, they notice the numerous empty bays, a sign of smugglers who get in and out without being seen. The ships land with Lando greeting them at the central hub. He welcomed everyone and even hugged Mara, and Mara claims she never gets hugged anymore because of her sickness. Lando wishes they had told him that they were coming so he could prepare, and he immediately takes them on a tour of the city. Lando's most impressive room was the control room, where he could view the small mining ships in space on the asteroids themselves. He then brought them to the hangar where the very recognizable TIE Advanced X-1 fighters were stored. Lando explains that model, specifically their adjustable shock couches, were best suited for his purposes. Lando tells them that they fly along the asteroid belt, not through, and that pilots would test the TIE Advanced bouncing capabilities and would often be found unconscious. Everyone was suspicious of it, but Lando assured them that the Belt Runner 1, the floating station that powered the ship shields, was solid. Convinced, Han and Leia let their kids fly test runs and even let them try to beat the leaderboard scores. Jaina recognized two names on the leaderboard, Kip Duran and Miko Reglia, two Jedi Knights. Jason and Jaina flew first and were running at the same time when Jason spun out of control and was towed back. Jaina continued the run and turned to the Force while Anakin began his run. Soon Anakin crashed into a rock and Jaina almost went to help him before he said he was alright. Jaina heard her mom tell her to come in, but she ignored her as Jaina wanted to begin her true run. After a few near misses, Jaina realized she couldn't react but had to anticipate her movements. Han consoled Leia who knew that Jaina had heard her but ignored her. Mera whispered to Jaina to trust the Force, and Luke remembered how Obi-Wan had told him to trust the Force in the trenches of the Death Star. Jaina got into the flow and was on her way to a record-breaking time. She was barely conscious, letting the Force do all the work. The onlookers saw a wall of asteroids and then cheered when Jaina blasted through it, which got a jump up and down from Chewbacca. Lando broadcasted the final minutes of the run to the entire planet and finally Jaina cleared the belt, not remembering any of it. In the control room, there was stunned silence. Han broke the silence when he said, the kid can fly. 